Committee Member Reynolds? Here. Committee Member DeLong? Here. Committee Member Thompson? Here. Chairperson Fowler? Here. And Vice Cha Chair Mr. Pittman? Here. And for our advisory members? Oh, I'm sorry, Chairperson Fowler? Present. Um, advisory members? C. Here. Advisory member Young. Here. Advisory member Ruther. Advisory member Knaus. Here. Advisory member Wright. Anybody? Mr. Chairperson, we have not received any. Okay. Let's go straight to the consent calendar. Approval of minutes. I like number one. <clears throat> I'd like to poll number two, please. Okay. Do we have to have a second for that? No. Okay. I'll second it. Consent calendar polling item number two. Okay. Sorry. Motion carries with five yeses. Next. Hold item number two so we can make a motion to approve the rest of the consent calendar. Or so, so the reason why I pulled number two just wanted to open the discussion, breach the discussion from this committee in regards to uh, the position right now of the administrative uh, administrator just to see uh, where we are. Uh, I know there's not a lot going on with the besides. Um, projects that I understand kind of tracking progress, progress tracking uh, to see whether we want to continue on as part time or move it to it as needed basis. So that's the reason why I pulled it for us to discuss it. Any thoughts? Mm -mm. Leave it as is or? Mr. Uh, Thompson. Thompson, I'm sorry. I was <laughs> trying to figure out what your role was in this committee. The um, I think that's a more appropriate discussion for item number four. Number two is the past. Okay. Great. Then more clarification the on motion it. to approve Pass. number two. Approve number two. Okay. I make a motion to approve number two. Is there a second? I'll second. Any other discussion? We need Mr. Chairperson, for... we haven't actually had a motion on item number one. So if you want to make the motion to approve item one and two, that would be helpful. I thought we did. You, you made calendar. a motion to pull, just pull the okay. item from the consent calendar. I thought we made a motion to approve the consent calendar pulling item two. Yeah. We were confused with okay. the way that happened. So that well, we approved the consent calendar pulling item number two. Okay. That's what I said. Okay. So this this right now is approving number two, right? Yes. Were the minutes actually approved? I don't think so, because he pulled before anything happened. Scott pulled number two, and you voted on that, 
And no, we he made a motion to approve the consent calendar minus number two, polling number two. Was the motion? <laughs> okay, if you say so. <laughs> that's what I heard. I believe that's the understanding as of now. Okay. Does yeah, that work for everybody? If that's the understanding now, then that works. Okay. Can we clarify who made this motion for item number two? I made the motion. Okay. And who seconded it? I did. Okay. Thank you. Motion carries with five yeses. So where are we now? So we move on to presentations and updates. And okay. the only one we have listed today um, is going to be given by Eric C. with DWR on our current SBF contract, um, the amendment number 12, which is still pending. Okay. Eric? Okay, so the um, <clears throat> the this is the our funding contract um, for the last uh, many years. We've been making um, payments to the Supplemental Benefits Fund Committee um, to the tune of a hundred thousand dollars a year. Back in twenty seventeen, we we jumped it to to three million. But this these are advances against um, the a lump sum payment in the um, the uh, settlement agreement, which is the four million one hundred thirty-five thousand dollar lump sum payment. So we've been making advances against that uh, that payment for uh, many years. Um, in twenty twenty, because of the budget um, crisis that was uh, expected by the governor, we had a directive from the governor's office that we could not uh, spend uh, money based on any contracts that were um, considered non-critical. Uh, and so this fell into that co that category because it was a uh, you know it was a voluntary action the department was taking. So um, that has now been lifted, and so we are um, back uh, um, putting the contract together. So um, it's uh, it, um, there's a hundred and I believe it's hundred thirty five thousand dollars left. So we're putting um, the uh, contract back together. We'll do the hundred thousand dollar payment as soon as we get the contract through our, our process and get it signed, and then um, they'll be the following year. We'll do the thirty five thousand. Um, hopefully, we get our new FERC license in the uh, not too distant future. Um, that will trigger that last uh, um, pot of money, if, if you will, in the uh, the settlement agreement for a million dollars a year, and then that'll go. Well, it'd be a million dollars a year if it's a uh, fifty-year license term. Um, it's if it's a forty-five-year license term, it's nine hundred thousand. That's described in the settlement agreement. But the you know we're hoping it'll be a fifty-year license term. We'll, we'll be at the, uh, the million-dollar level. So. Uh, that that's the update. You know, we're, we've um, now have started the uh, the contract process to get that going again. Thank you. Do you have any updates in regarding the FERC license? No, I, I wish I did, but uh, FERC is always very tight lipped about it. We, you know, when we have meetings with them, we'll, um, you know, we always ask, and they um, really can't comment on it. So. Uh, the uh, I think the best indicator at this point, as far as where things are, is the environmental assessment for the um, the spillways emergency. Um, that uh, we expect that to be um, resolved before they would uh, go on to um, the uh, the new license issues, just because that's a, a pretty significant action, and uh, you know it makes sense for them to to um, have that completed before they uh, they went on to the, the you know going back to the relicensing. So. Um, we have not received that environmental assessment yet, and so we're, we're all that, that's what we're keeping an eye on. We, we expect them to take care of that first. So once that happens, I would say, okay, that kind of clears the path for um, them to to go on to issuing the new license. If I may, go ahead. And so the last one was like ten years it took for the environmental impact report, right? No, the, I think you might be thinking of the biological opinion from the, the National Marine Fisheries Service. That took um, it took a while. It took I, I would say seven years of of uh, time for them to, from when we for when we expected it, that that document. We, we had the initial. Um, they issued a draft in two thousand and nine, and so it went to twenty sixteen before they um, actually issued the uh, issued the document. But you know, we submitted the license package in two thousand and six. Um, the uh, well, that was when the settlement agreement was signed. So um, you know, we received our 401 certification. So over the years, you know, we, we um, received the uh, all the necessary documents uh, for the issuance of the new license, and now we basically have all of that. That whole package is complete. The last one we were waiting on was that National Marine Fisheries Service uh, document. So um, that's all just just waiting on the shelf now. Committee Member Pittman. 
Oh, no. Okay. Um, once you got the National Fisheries Report, has DWR responded to that or had any um, uh, actionable items to that report? We um, did have some uh, some meetings with the National Marine Fisheries Service. A lot of it was just clarification. Um, they had asked us, you know, um, to uh, take a look at and, and answer some questions as they were forming the thing. So we we had a good sense of where um, where it was going. But uh, we did have some some meetings with them, and and we you know. I can't say we're entirely happy with some of the ch changes that they made from the, the settlement agreement, some things they've added on, but uh, nonetheless, you know, we're um, we're ready to go with it. And we actually so, started doing so some internal So we could planning. say that there's really no disputes between D DWR and National Fisheries? No, there are no disputes. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? If I could. I had, the letter that I handed out I received yesterday, it appears that the... Um, law firm that issued the letter is gearing up for litigation regarding the environmental study um, so that's probably going to prolong this process I don't believe it's going to shorten it um, but Eric could probably speak to that and what the specific meanings of this are since he's more of an expert in this area than I am by any stretch of the imagination the uh, question that I really have is if the contract was set to sunset at the beginning of this July this contract has sunset it is that correct the contract we had did, yes. We're doing a new contract. Okay, and the, which means that since that contract sunsetted, that uh, all the terms and conditions that exist under the exhausted or sunsetted contract are no longer the terms and conditions that necessarily would be in a new contract. Um, we're going to use the same contract terms so I mean we're just going to basically cut and paste the you know as far as the uh, settlement agreement the payment schedule the, those types of things we're, we're just going to we're going to continue with that well that's what you're going to do but that doesn't mean that's what we're going to do okay because that is my understanding is now uh, by not renewing this in a timely manner you have allowed the contract to expire not you personally so okay. whatever well, was was whatever will be is wide open now because of the lack of the state to act in a timely manner. Okay, well, you understand the um, settlement agreement calls for a, a payment schedule. Correct. Um, and DWR has satisfied all of the conditions of the settlement agreement payment schedule. So what's, what's been asked of us is to um, voluntarily um, provide advancements against the, the, the future pot of money, the 4135000 that wasn't really supposed to trigger until the new license was issued. And so we agreed voluntarily to, uh, to continue that. So if, if the, uh, this committee or, or the, the city administrator, the fund administrator, does not want us to do that, we can, we can hold off. But uh, my understanding is that this has been the, um, the desire of this committee is for us to, uh, to proceed with the, I believe there's 135000 left in that pot of money to uh, provide that. And, the, and maybe we should have this conversation offline, Eric, I don't know. But if the position is is that the only caveat to that contract was those advanced payments that are actually overdue because of the um, lateness of things, you know, that's that puts us in a different position. But if it opens up everything else, I think now my point is now would be a good time if we needed to have addendums or something added to this to make this agreement modern and not 16 or 15 years old, whatever it is at this point. Now may be a good time to have those conversations. I mean, I don't know how you feel about that, but, um, you know, I see this as an opportunity for us to freshen up a very old document that doesn't look like it's going to get um, any legs to it anytime soon. From our perspective, well, you know, I look back to the the settlement agreement. That's that is our agreement with the uh, with the stakeholders, and so um, we will we will follow through with all of our obligations in the settlement agreement. And that settlement agreement obligation was not to provide these advance payments, um, but we you know had decided to do that based on a request from this committee back you know many years ago now. I think the position from the committee, uh, I'm not speaking for the committee, but from the perspective of the um, administrator of the fund on this side, is we have an agreement that's about to, ex we have an agreement that has expired. We have funding that's running out very rapidly, um, and we have no end, end game for this. This is, I guess, uh, next year, if funding situations don't change, then this committee is just going to have to go into hiatus until such time as a license issued is issued because we're out of money. Uh, so 
you know, maybe we need to have those discussions, Eric, about what we can do to just kind of keep this thing going until such time as that happens. Because I understand it's not your fault that the license hasn't came or, you know, all of the obstacles that we've had to face. But, you know, I, I think it's uh, now it's extremely urgent that we get something done to keep this committee and this process alive, because when it does eventually happen, I think it's going to be extremely important to have this committee to ensure those that funding is going to the things that it should be going to and that we have a good partnership. But Right now, I just see this thing as uh, it's drying up quickly. So I have a quick question. Jordan, I talked to you earlier in the week about having a line item, basically having these discussions that Mr. Legrone just brought up, and I'm not seeing it on. Is, am I missing it? So bring me the budget. Our, yeah, our discussion earlier this week, I had mentioned that I had a presentation from Eric C. on this item with our con with our contract number so 12. So this is it? This, this is, is it. Okay. Yeah, so wonderful. Yeah, so it's... Freaks, speak freely as commission and ask DWR any questions you have, um, as long as well as with this new information we just received. Thank you. So, Eric, I'm going to piggyback off what Mr. Legrone has said. I agree with a lot of what he said, and there's so much more to be said. And I would like to see a larger discussion from this committee um, based on these issues. The fact that the contract is not renewed and that things have changed. And we've had this conversation in the past about readdressing. Uh, the contract and getting more out of it. Can you comment on that? I guess just overall, um, the department is going to honor the settlement agreement, and, and we have. So um, we decided to uh, take a step further than that back um, about 10 years ago at you know the request of this committee to start providing advance payments. Even though it wasn't a requirement in the settlement agreement, we um, agreed to do that. And so that is what we're working on right now is to provide um, to, to continue that advanced payment schedule. If that's not something this committee um, wants to do, then please let me know and I make we can we can stop progress on on that. But that's what the contract right now that we're working on is going to do is it's going to allow for that advanced payment to occur outside of that, then um, we'll be you know basically following the terms of the settlement agreement, which will be when the new license is issued, we will um, make payment on what is ever left of that lump sum fund that four million one hundred thirty five thousand and then we would start that schedule of the the you know if it's a 50-year license the million dollars a year committee member Pittman yeah thank you and Eric you do describe it correctly I was on the SBF back in that day when this particular agreement you're talking about was put together and and I think the best thing to do at this point is for you to bring forth the agreement so that we can now talk about it and get it before this body so we can sit down and look at it and uh, talk about it. That's the key thing. You've got to bring it forward. Otherwise, we're just kind of talking in the wind right now. But I'm glad to see the state has finally uh, released your uh, strings so that you can bring something forward. And I think it's a great idea. Um, that's the best thing, I think, to do right at this point in time. Uh, the settlement agreement is a separate document. And I think it's complicated for everyone to understand that this advance payment thing, uh, and I'm going to give credit to Linda Dahlmeyer. She was really spearheading that when we were back on the SBF in those days. So I uh, appreciate that discussion, and it's good to hear that at least we see some funding. But I think the, the administrator is correct that, you know, the funds are drying up, so it um, would be great to see it, the document as soon as possible so we can work on it. And by the document, do you mean the, the contract for – Making the payment, the or advanced, the the advanced payment okay. contract. Essentially, it's the same thing that you mentioned, and uh, you know, got to bring it forward here. There's really no sense talking about anything until we see that. Okay. Well, and yeah. just just so everyone understands what the way we work as a you know as a government agency. So we, in order for us to transfer money to um, you know a uh, you know a contractor, or in this case, it's an interagency agreement because it's two uh, two governments. Gotcha. We have to have a contract in place in order for us to to cut the check and, and write it. So we get you know once we have the contract in place, then we get invoiced by the city, mm -hmm. and then DWR takes that invoice and makes that payment. To the city, so gotcha. we have to have that contract in place first. Mm -hmm. So there's a settlement agreement, which is the, um, the is the agreement that yeah. re that requires the, the funding, and it is then we have to have a contract mechanism. So if we're going to be making advance payments, we have to have a contract mechanism. If we eventually wait for the new license to get issued, and then we um, you know in, you know we start following the requirements right. in that, we would still need a contract in order to make sure. that that happen. Understood. Yeah, I understand. So and then we do that with our other you know partner yep. agencies, Department of Parks and Recreation. You know we provide funding to them for uh, some of the management up at Lake Orville. 
um, we can't just write them a check. Even no. though we're a sister agency, we actually have to have a sure. contract in place in order for us to be able to transfer the money. So, right. th and so that's what we're talking about. Gotcha. Uh, sounds good. Look forward to seeing it. Okay. Yeah. Any other committee member? Moving forward. Item number four, establish SPF budget for 2021-2022. So on this item, we have Ruth Wright with us, who's going to present on um, the 2021-2022 SBF budget. Good afternoon, committee members. Ruth Wright, Finance Director, City of Oroville. Um, in doing your budget this year, if you, if you have uh, last year's in your agenda, we had appropriated 1.6 million for grants and you can see that we only spent uh, about a million uh, one of that. So what happened when we were budgeting is uh, we had about $700,000 in encumbrances and we budget back April and May, so it's really hard to tell what's gonna happen through the end of the year. And there was $700,000 in encumbrances, so I thought, oh, it was all gonna be paid by the end of the year. So I did not budget enough for the 21-22. So that's gonna be adjusted at the first um, annual uh, meeting with the council. We'll have that adjusted and raised because there are a lot of encumbrances against that. There's about a million dollars left in the fund right now. So I will be providing the budget quarterly and year-to-date actuals at every meeting. Were there any other questions? Questions, comments? Pittman? I have a question. Um, okay. Now that you're running this, is this available to see on OpenGov? Yes, also? it always has been, always. yes. Okay. It's one of our funds. Right. I just might make sure because some of the uh, committee members are you know, not with the city. They don't understand how that works. You might just quickly mention that. Sure. We have an open transparency portal called OpenGov where in every month we upload all of our financial data up into it, has all of our funds. So it, it defaults to the general fund. So you want to go in there and find the SBF fund, click on it, and we'll give you all the information as far as revenues, expenditures to date, and budget. And that's uploaded monthly. Cool. Thank you. If you like, I can send you a link. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. Sure. Mr. Chairperson, if we could, this would be the time if you wanted to discuss the um, position, if you wanted it to be a full-time position, part-time position, or an as-needed position, this would be the appropriate place to have that conversation to adjust that budget if that's what the committee chose to do. Scott? Yeah, I think it's just important conversation, uh, important but uncomfortable, obviously, conversation to have, uh, just like with any committee or business, once the funds run out, like we've already discussed, what do you do? So um, I think it's just an important conversation for us to have and decide conscientiously and uh, intentionally of what our plans are. I mean, if we're not going to, are, are there going to be a NOFA released this year? Is this committee going to, a new one? Is this committee going to choose to release a, a new NOFA? Um, or are we just going to maintain current NOFAs? You know, that, that will dictate the level of work that's going to be required. If we are not planning on releasing a new NOFA, then all that's left is just to, my understanding, is to maintain the current projects, so. Yeah, at this time, um, there would not be funding to release another NOFA. So essentially what this position would be doing over the next year or until such time as funding became available would be just managing the NOFAs that are out there, paying bills, um, documenting things like that, uh, keeping up with the, uh, status of the license conducting these meetings such things as that so it is something that is conceivably possible that it's a uh, we could bill to the fund as that time is used um, the employee currently in the position would be absorbed into the city um, uh, and not necessarily you know when this thing hits and takes off that employee may not be available we may have to look outside after that because depending on the amount of time and how things change um, they could be in a different capacity in the city. So this is an option. Uh, I believe after this year, 
next year you're going to have about $49,000 um, left, period, after all your NOFAs are paid and all of your grants are done. So next year, if you don't make this decision this year, next year it's going to be an absolute, no, um, it's not going to be a choice. Well, I, I for one, I don't, I don't see, just like we've already had a discussion of uh, the FERC license be renewed, uh, most of the the forwarding of funds has been given. I don't necessarily see a ton of funds being released where we can submit or release a new NOFA. Uh, I haven't heard anybody else speak here, but I, for one, I think it's expedient for us to move this position to an as-needed basis uh, for, just like you said, for management of current NOFAs, paying bills, and the like. Mr. Anybody Thompson, else have any thoughts on this? Why don't Why don't we do this uh, for right now? Since it's budgeted in there, um, let's can proceed on till the next meeting, and we'll bring back what that looks like to you, what that funding, and how long that funding will carry you forward. Um, if that will work for the committee. Well, my only concern is right now we're talking about the budget for this next year. So if we just approve a budget based on what, based on a part time position or change the budget bring it back with you based on a, a total or a max spending expenditure i mean I think this is that's what i understand here is more this is more of an a, a max this is actually including a, a part-time person this is everything necessary in that budget for that you can amend the budget at the next meeting if you chose um you know, I think it's important you have accurate numbers in front of you. We have to try to calculate how much we're going to be billing back, how much time we'll be spending on this so we can give you some accurate numbers because I would hate to tell you that we're going to reduce it from a part-time position then end up billing at a rate that is a part-time position over the course of the year. So um, so I understand what you're saying. I mean, if you want, you can put a – you can do a reduction or ask um, Ms. George or Ms. Daly to do a – reduction of the personnel in there by 50%. So that would take you through the end of the year. And at the end of the year, we would have to have a discussion about how we're going to fund that position. Um, hopefully that will occur sooner so that we can begin the the process of transitioning to billing back our time against the project. So we would be meeting in September, is that correct? And have that information available? Your next meeting is October. October, okay. Or we could meet again sooner if you like. If you'd like to yes. set a special meeting, we can do that so that we can have accurate numbers for you. Right now in this committee, we we can change these numbers. Right? Yes, sir, you can. Or you could leave this item, continue it for a month, and then bring it back and have that discussion if you like, or two weeks, whatever it is that this committee feels is appropriate. That That would be my recommendation, but there's another person in the queue. Mr. Pittman. Yeah, thank you. Um, my question is kind of to Mr. C over there. What kind of time frame are we talking about this? Uh, are we talking 30 days, 60 days for your um, augmented? Um, it'll be months for us to put a contract through. In fact, I put a note in my, when I got to my turn again, I was going to ask about timeline because um, the, uh, if, you know, depending on how the, the committee wants to proceed, from that point forward, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's several months for us. I mean, we have we have to you know draft the contract. We have to you know run it through all of our right. signature chain. You know, may need to go to Department of General Services for review. Of course, legal and all all that stuff. So there's, you know, it, it's it's several months for us to to put a contract through. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think it helps the committee understand. Right. And I was going to say, if we want to have a special meeting, let's not wait all the way till October. You know, right. it would be better to do it sooner so that we get a decision. So if I need to get moving, I can get moving. Thank you. That's the only question I had, just to help us in this. I, I would say just to move forward and we'll review the item in the October meeting myself. Want to go sooner than that, Mr. Thompson? I'm, I'm flexible. I'd like to go sooner. Well, I have no problem going sooner. Just I, I would lay it on staff that when they have something to bring us, then that, that would be good. We could bring a, um, a couple variations of the budget revised with different um, um, funding strategies or expenditure strategies if the committee would like that. As opposed to approving a budget today, we could continue it for two weeks or a month, whatever works for the committee. September. It's your timeline, not two ours. I'm sorry? Two weeks would be in August. Okay. Mm -hmm. So two weeks? All right, we can do that. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? All right, moving on to action item number five. Request from Waterville Area Chamber of Commerce for the 2021 funding. 
Let me get there. Amber. So we have Amber with us from the Chamber of Commerce. So, and yes, I understand all the funding difficulties, but I still need to make this request for our tourism contract. This is the last bit of tourism funding we have due to DWR not having funds as well. We have lost that tourism contract for almost a year now, unless hopefully now that that's been lifted, maybe. <laughs> that one isn't general services, so uh, it's almost all the way through. Awesome. So... But for those who aren't familiar, what we've been doing for every year for the last few years with our tourism contract, all this incorporates is maintenance of visitoraville.com, which is our tourism website that has everything there is about Oroville on there. It also funds us keeping our community calendar up to date and using time yeah, not just to focus on member events, but to make sure we have a full body community calendar promoting it out of the area, social media boosting posts, blogs, emails, just really trying to get everything about the community out there to bring tourists into our community. So we're hoping over the next year to be able to continue with this and look into more advertising opportunities as more events are becoming available and as COVID restrictions lift, just really bring more people back to Oroville and hopefully get our commerce back skyrocketing with visitors. So if you have any questions about the contract. Comments or discussion? Just that there's no P in Thompson. Dang it. <laughs> I apologize. Usually I remember. Here now. Yep. Yes, he's, he's gone. I, I updated it. <laughs> I apologize it's about fine. that. It happens all the time. <laughs> They call you Vean Thompson? What? They call you Vean Thompson? Mm -hmm. Vean? <laughs> Please continue. Um, any other questions or feedback on the contract scope? Um, this contract really doesn't have a requirement for you to coordinate facilities. You're just marketing facilities or activities. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. So the coordination of activities kind of comes from the the DWR contract, if I remember right. Yes, so, okay. exactly. Yeah. So th my question was, I know some activities have been rescheduled, canceled, redone, whatever the case. And so, and, and, and as an in lieu, if say, you know, something doesn't happen, how are you backfilling that need of the contract or how would you backfill the need? For like just marketing events? Yeah, or? yeah, I guess, I mean, Coordination of activities is a tough one because there's so many things like, let's say, the, the, the flower festival. Yes. Um, I don't know that it happened. I don't know if it did happen. Yeah, the wildflower festival wildflower, did yeah. happen. Yeah. yeah. So if it doesn't happen, how do we, how do we backfill that with that, that particular contract? So it's just, for example, this contract, we actually extended the previous year, so we just put it into an extension okay. with those extra funds. So our current contract ends at the end of April. We extended it for two months just gotcha. for promotion due to that. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry, Jonathan Young. Thank you very much. My apologies uh, for not being there in person. Uh, I was wondering, as part of this budget, can you explain um, kind of a breakdown of, of how much of this is, is facing out towards, you know, communities beyond the region um, and how much of it is really targeting folks in the region? So it's about half and half. We've definitely focused more locally due to COVID-19 restrictions over the last years last year but previous to that we reached out all the way to the sacramento and bay area with our promotions especially for annual festival events like the fourth of july wildflower and nature festival salmon festival parade of lights and feather fiesta days so as covid restrictions lift we will be putting more funds into reaching communities outside of the butte county area great thank you very much Mr. Chairperson. Any other comments? Oh, yes, we do have um, Anna who would like to speak. Okay. I just have a question. Would you please come up? Yeah, come up. Oh. 
This is Anna. I just have a question about how do we go about finding out where you spend the money, where does it go, you know, how the money's spent, all that stuff that you guys do. Is there a, a document that we can see every year that tells us how the money's spent and where it's being spent and all that stuff? How do we go about getting a copy of that? Yeah, so I can actually, I will send you one personally. So every year I make a yearly report to the SBF committee covering everything we put into attracting tourism to Oroville. And I'm going to take a guess here that that report back there eventually finds its way into open.gov? No? Oh, no? Okay. It would, it, I believe it would as an item that was paid, but the specific detail wouldn't be. But I know okay. we do maintain that detail. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So do a public records request. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good yeah, so, so the last report was made in the February SBF meeting, so I did a 2020 report. 2020, I did 2019, et cetera, et cetera. Committee member Thompson. Um, my recommendation to this uh, committee would be to uh, push this conversation until we are going over the, the budget in a couple of weeks, whenever that next meeting is, and we're looking at reducing our staff. So would be my recommendation. Okay. Any other comment? Do you want to make that a motion? Sure. I make a motion that we postpone this discussion into the next meeting. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? Call the vote, please. Yes. Motion carries with five yeses. Okay. So, thank you, thank guys. You. <laughs> uh, steering committee advisory members and staff comments. Uh, DWR advisory report. Eric. Okay, can you please cue the slides? Okay, here we go, good. So the um, committee should be familiar with some of these slides. I try to use some of the same slides each uh, at each meeting just uh, so you're um, familiar with it and I can show the progress over the course of the season. So I'd like to start out with this. This is the um, the eight station uh, precipitation index. So these are um, a, a series of uh, monitoring stations throughout the uh, the Northern Sierra and Southern uh, Cascades that uh, represent the uh, the watershed of, of Lake, you know, that, that goes into Lake Orville and then, you know, the, the mountains in the, in the area. So this isn't just specific to Lake Orville, but it, it really is an ind indicator of the type of winter that we um, we have, or, or water year, as, as we like to call it. Um, the water year starts in October um, and uh, runs uh, through the following uh, end of September. So if you look um, in the uh, in in the shaded area, um, there's a, a box that says current. That's where we are right now at the, at this date. That's 23.2 inches. Um, the uh, the top end of that shaded area, which is uh, represents an average over um, the course of 1966 through 2015, um, is uh, the 51.8. So we're we're below half of what we uh, would normally see uh, for this time of year in an average year. So uh, and everyone knows that, of course, by now we're we're in a in a pretty significant uh, uh, drought um, cycle. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so this represents where Lake Orville is right now. So with the uh, there that the blue line at the very left end of it, um, that was on the 26th. We're now on the on the 28th. Um, Lake Orville is uh, is dropping, um, you know, is, is dropping steadily right now. Um, through the, uh, the first week of uh, of August, it's going to be um, down um, just above uh, the 640 um, foot elevation. So uh, we're rapidly approaching our um, lowest uh, lake level that we've uh, we've seen. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, and then this is a forecast of uh, where we're going to be um, for the uh, the rest of the year. Um, this 
Um, this is, uh, represents uh, the forecast from the end of June, but uh, things haven't really changed much. I mean, this is really going to be um, pretty pretty telling of uh, where we're going to be going up through the rest of the year. So lake elevation is on that, um, the, the y-axis on the left-hand side, um, and uh, the black line is, is the lake level. So you can see where we're going. Um, we're going to be down uh, below um, probably about 620 um, or so, uh, probably a little bit below that. Um, that's what it's showing in November, December. The, um, of course, you know, once we get past uh, November, or so it just depends on the hydrology when we start getting our, our winter storms that the lake will start coming up. So um, hopefully we'll get an early, early winter this year and we'll start uh, refilling the lake. Next slide, please. Okay, regarding uh, Feather River flows, um, the uh, the actually there's one slide that's missing. Okay, there you go. Oh, that's okay, I'm happened. back it up. It must not have made it into the. I, ha I had actually another slide to uh, talk about the um, the uh, historic lake levels, but uh, maybe it'll be later in the in the the string. Okay, so this is the uh, the Feather River um, this, um, right at the Fish Barrier Dam. This represents the uh, low flow channel Feather River Fish Hatchery you see above the Table Mountain Bridge there. Um, so uh, right now, um, as of uh, we're actually um, switching flows a little bit today, but uh, by uh, the end of today, uh, three o'clock or so, um, low flow channel will be at. Uh, uh, 1,850 CFS. Um, the high flow channel is at 2,250 CFS. So it'll be 300 CFS coming out of the After Bay River outlet with uh, 1,850 running down the low flow channel. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, this is a slide that probably makes Anna pretty happy. She's uh, well, she stepped out. So um, we are uh, in a very different operational um, scenario uh, than normal. We um, have uh, started using the river valves uh, quite significantly. So most of the flow coming out of uh, Lake Orville now is actually through our river valve outlet system. Um, the uh, that's right at the base of Orville Dam. It's very cold water, and so it is being uh, mixed with uh, what, what little water we're moving through the uh, the power plant right now. But we're um, very um, rapidly approaching the point where uh, high power plant's going to be going offline uh, just because the lake levels get too low for us to be able to operate it uh, within its operation range. So um, we are um, increasingly um, using the uh, the river valves, which is that very cold water. So uh, this is a temperature uh, chart. This is the um, in the low flow channel down at a place called Robinson's Riffle. So it's about uh, five miles downstream of the uh, city of Orville. Um, temperatures were running um, in in the uh, you know 64 65 degree range and um, dropped when we you know increased flows out of the uh, river outlet. So now we're down in the uh, the uh, low 50s, which is if you're a salmon or a, a steelhead, that's a, a really nice temperature. Um, it's it's kind of a strange phenomenon we have where in the middle of this drought with all the hot temperatures and fires and everything else, where everything seems to be hot hot water. I was you know last week in central Idaho on a river and uh, they actually closed fishing down at 11 o'clock each day just because the temperatures were getting getting warmer in the afternoon <coughs> and they wanted to protect the fish, so um, it, which is very unusual for that particular river. Um, and here we are in the Feather River, where um, the coldest temperatures I've ever seen since I've been here in uh, at the end of uh, end of July. But uh, that's what, that's what's going on. So uh, it's good for the fish in the river, at least, um, where we're having these uh, really cold temperatures. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so recreation projects. Um, this is the um, uh, slide I actually showed at, at our last meeting in April, but just wanted to, to reiterate this. So this is the new Loafer uh, Point uh, boat ramp facility. The uh, upper stage um, of the, uh, the boat ramp, it's a, a two-stage boat ramp. Uh, so you're seeing that parking lot and upper stage uh, boat ramp, um, and then in the distance, uh, that was going to that was the slide's a little bit older, but that was going to be the future site of the uh, the stage two boat ramp. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, that's a, a slide of the uh, when the stage two boat ramp there on the left was uh, under construction. Um, I, I like this slide because it also shows the uh, the, low, the uh, uh, Bidwell Canyon. Um, boat ramp, um, which is a multi-stage uh, boat ramp uh, um, project that we uh, completed um, at, um, earlier this year. Um, but uh, anyway, so this, this shows both boat ramps. Uh, next slide, please. That's the, uh, the final version of the, um, the um, Loafer Point boat ramp that we were able to complete before Lake Orville did come up. So uh, it was actually in the water um, uh, for a temporary period. People were launching on it for a short time, and then the lake dropped down, and uh, that boat ramp came out of the water. Uh, but the uh, the upper portion of the ramp is a six-lane uh, boat ramp, um, two boarding floats for that ramp, um, 161 trailer 
parking sp uh, spaces with uh, six ADA um, spaces and then six uh, ship shape, you know, boat rigging uh, type um, of, uh, of parking spaces. So it's a total of 173 parking spaces in that parking lot. Um, currently, um, the uh, the ramp you see there goes down. Uh, the bottom of it is at the 702 foot elevation, um, and uh, we are in the process of putting a contract together for um, an extension of that uh, boat ramp. So, you know, we got chased out when the when the water came up um, earlier this spring, but uh, with the water dropping out now, um, later on this um, this fall and into the winter, we'll be um, uh, doing another construction project to extend on the the bottom end of that boat ramp. So, um, and that we're going to take down to at least uh, the 642 foot elevation. So it's uh, one of the nice things about having low water is it does allow us to uh, to do these low water um, boat ramp projects. So uh, once we get the project completed this winter, we'll have the lowest um, ramp at Lake Orville. We'll be there at the Loafer Point. So uh, it's a little bit of a silver lining uh, to utilize the uh, the low water that we're going to have this year to be able to do a construction project like that. So with all these boat ramps, you can almost change your name to DBR. Department of <laughs> boat ramps. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, parks might uh, take offense with that. But, um, anyways, uh, so uh, that's the uh, that's the update on the recreation projects. There's no construction going on right now because you know we're we're still uh, um, waiting. This will be our, our last big project that we'll be uh, implementing um, um, this this year as far as uh, boat ramps go. Eric, yeah. I have a question. Sure. Um, I like the plan. I do remember um, some years ago when the lake got a little bit low and you know you guys were talking about extending the ramps and then when the water got low you didn't have any money do you have money this time we do good we do i mean we're, we're going to um, be advertising the contract soon so um we you know we're, at, we're in that process right now of putting that that contract package together but yes we do have the money good thanks can you scroll a little bit more there's one slide i was hoping might have sneaked to the end if uh no that's it okay all right I uh, had a picture that showed all the low water years um, since uh, since um, you know that were below 700. Um, but one thing I did want to point out: the lowest uh, water year was uh, in um, 1977 when we got down to 645. So uh, I think there's a few people in the room here that uh, probably saw that. I, I never did, but uh, this year we're going to be, be seeing the, the lowest the lake has ever been. So. Any comments? Yeah. I just have a quick uh, a comment. I know it's been said before, but for me, a boat lamp or boat ramp on the lake, excuse me, means I can't fish or swim there. So it's not really a recreational facility. I don't think calling it recreation for the people of Oroville is not necessarily a, a good way to put it. Um, and, and to give you an example of I, what did that boat ramp cost approximately? Uh, when we are completed with the entire facility there, stage one, stage two, the bathrooms, uh, lighting, all of that, it'll be um, about $21 million. $21 million. So I did, I, I don't, anybody familiar with the Sierra Buttes trail stewardship mm. yeah, out of Downeyville? Mm -hmm. So um, they do a thing, and, and any, anything you look at in Outside Magazine, any other type of outdoor magazine, it talks about river towns that are uh, re-envisioning themselves and recreating themselves. They usually talk about three things. They talk about trails, open spaces, and they talk about things to do on the river, features in the river, whether it be a wave or a water park like uh, Councilman Member Pittman was talking about years ago. Um, it usually has stuff to do with that. You seldom see anything about boat ramps. So Sierra uh, Buttes Trail Stewardship does, in cooperation with the US, U.S. Forest Service, they have a campaign every year where they do $5 a foot for trails through the forest around Downeyville. They've expanded into Quincy and uh, Taylorsville in that area as well. Um, and I, I came up with this just looking at what was on the agenda today. So um, we have a lot of area around us that we could expand trails into. Golden Gate Park, everybody talks about how cool Golden Gate Park is. That's a roughly 1,000 acres. Bidwell Park is 3,670 acres. And people, why do they love to live in Chico? Bidwell Park, most people will say that. So if you combine Lorsa, Riverbend Park, and the Oroville Wildlife Area, we have 41,457 acres of land around us that directly connects that could be an amazing selling point, I think, for Oroville. Um, the, at the $5 a foot, so if we were to take $60,000, um, 
which was asked for today, and not that that's not a valid use of the money, but that's two and a half miles of trails that we could establish in the Oroville area for whatever purpose, for hiking, walking, um, biking, and I think that's a big one that's not really uh, developed and uh, encouraged in our area through the LORSA and through DWR's land. The problem we have is that all of the land that would be good to use for trails is state land. Is there a possibility to develop new trails and incorporate all of this area and make it look or appear as it's one gigantic park that you can access from nice trails leaving through Oroville to get even to say the top of Table Mountain? to the, uh, the Table Mountain Ecological Reserve up there. There's pg and E's trying to give us land for um, restoration and recreation right away through their property. How, it's, it's frustrating for me and, and being on, on the sidelines and seeing what's happened in the past with the SBF funding. Um, and this, this is just one avenue. I mean, if we wanted to, we could have a world-class and I've talked to people about this before, a wave in Oroville with a beach where kids could ride their boogie boards into the beach. We could do a whitewater park. When are we going to talk about doing something that's going to make Oroville stand apart and not just give $50 to this person? And is that in the future? Is that something, is it possible to do that type of stuff with DWR's land and the Lorsa property? I mean, or is that just something it seems like is not feasible? Is that why it hasn't been done? Is there a way to well, give five dollars a foot to build trails to make access to? Um, well, I, I, you know, I think when you get to the, all of what it costs to build a trail, it's, it's at least in, in our area, it's a lot more than five dollars a foot. But uh, nonetheless, we, we have a, actually a trails plan in the new um, FERC license when the new recreation right. plan you guys is implemented. Yeah, I mean, and that shows the existing trails. That doesn't include, you know, some of the things we're going to do once a new FERC license is issued. So there actually is a trails plan in the um, in the uh, the new settlement agreement recreation management plan right. that triggers when the new license is issued. You know, we have, as you see in the map there, we have a you know a pretty vast trail system as it stands right now. There's I think 75 to 90 miles, something like that, depending on how you measure it, of, of trails in our area. Um, certainly, there always could be more, and you know that's that's a great part about the um, the supplemental benefits fund is you know there, there's the component that's within Los Ro, which is you know going to be um, DWR and state parks, but then you know there can be things expanded outside of that area. You know, connecting the the city. That's what the SBF is for, and that's what what you are for as a committee to right. uh, make those decisions. I mean, DWR's requirement is to provide the funding, but as far as how the funding is distributed, it really is up to this committee to make those calls. Okay, and and most of the trails on here. I mean. Uh, th the trails around the, the lake are excellent, but then you get into the valley and essentially somebody called a road a trail. So um, I, just, I just think it could be improved. And I'm, I would like to see more talk about recreation in our area and doing stuff that the community is going to enjoy. And um, so anyway, not, not necessarily boat ramps. I'd, Boat ramp. Well, I can really. Tell you. Boat ramps are a big part of the recreation in this area, and you know, it, if you have a boat, well, certainly if you own a boat. I mean, a lot of people here do own a boat, and you know, I know it, it's been a very big desire from um, the the community and the recreation stakeholders to have you know more boat ramps and to have them go deeper into the lake zone. So we are addressing that right now, but we do have a lot more we're going to do when the new license is issued. Is there information on the trails that are proposed with the first yes. license? Yes, it's it's in Appendix <clears throat> D of the um, the the recreation management plan. And I, I can get you a copy of that. Okay. Like. In fact, I can send that. I can make sure everyone on the, the committee is. Eric, just very quickly, um, I've been here 20 years, and I can tell you there are more people that don't have boats, that don't use the lake, that enjoy the river and have access to open space and want more access to those amenities and open space than the lake, which is a point of order. Uh, Mr. Thompson. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. C. Good afternoon. So um, I, I'm just going to, just to front this, I'm going to be echoing a lot of the sentiments that are here. Um, I do appreciate the new boat ramp. I know, I'm sure the community, especially those that, that have a boat, appreciate the new boat ramps. I think they're done well. Um, obviously, the, the Department of Water Resources has spent a lot of money for the boat ramps. Um, my question is in regards to, I think my just frustration that I share is in regards to the boat ramps, 
is the current Loafer Creek boat ramp extension that you guys did, is that included? Was that part of the settlement agreement? Yes, but it was, it was a, well, to get into the details, it was, it was a, sort of a second, um, a second phase of projects. It's supposed to be a first phase of projects over the first 10 years, and there's going to be a second phase of projects. Um, that project um, was triggered because of the spillway emergency and the need for addressing the um, closures that had occurred for the construction period um, during the emergency. So um, that's what that's where we, we took out the settlement agreement recreation management plan and found projects that addressed that need at that time. So that's why that project got uh, thrust to the, the forefront. So <laughs> sorry, this isn't it's, it's funny, but not funny. But so you, you guys took action, which was great, on a boat ramp and spent $20 million, give or take, on this amazing, you, these several, was that just the Lover Creek boat ramp or was that also the Bidwell? That's well? that one facility, yes. So then there's also the Bidwell extension that happened. That was about $8 million, yeah. So, you know, now we're close to maybe to $30 million. I think I want to say I saw a slide that was like $42 million. Oh, yeah, there's other projects too. That, you know. Right. So my, my point is, is with the millions of dollars, something I've, you've heard me say before, but I'll just echo it again. I would love to see DWR take the same or even a tenth of the initiative that has been on towards boat ramps and provide just like the other committee member, um, sorry. Shannon. What? Shannon. Shannon. Yeah. Um, said regarding, you know, bike trails. I'm originally from Boise, which is one of the fastest growing cities. I was just there last week. Yeah. Right. And you, you probably saw the green belt then. It's amazing. Miles and miles. That Honestly, Mr. C, we could have, you know, maybe not as long, because I'm not sure if we have as much river, but you saw how beautiful that was with, you know, bike trails that crossed over that you could easily, you know, ride your bike on both sides of the river, cross over with, with these amazing you know, bridges that you could walk on or bike on. And, and if you've been there, which you have, you saw that people are there all the time. I mean, you can't ever really go down the river and see that people aren't accessing and using those trails constantly. And it's a huge draw for the area of just like he said, you know, people to use that. And again, just like he said, that if we were to have, you know, a fraction of the $42 million that was spent on boat ramps, just to add some trails on both sides, you know, that would be a huge benefit to the community. I know that you keep saying once the, you know, <laughs> the, the speech that you gave to him, like I've heard that speech before, of once the FERC license is yeah, yada, yada, yada. But it would be great to see DWR take care of Orville in such a way that you put some simple light, lit boat, or bike paths, walking paths on both sides of the river maybe with some bridges that would be, a, you know, something that you could enjoy in your family as well here, you know, in, in Oroville, because I don't know who on this committee has a boat, but I don't, I know that you have kayaks. I have, I have kayaks, you know, but I know most of our community doesn't own a boat. And I do appreciate the fact that we do have, um, you know, fishing competitions that come in town, but even those have decreased. And so we do have to find other creative ways to, access and enjoy the river instead of that myopic view of just more boat ramps and more spaces for people who have boats to come and enjoy the river you know having that i'm asking for trails give us give us some trails in the same way that you took the initiative to do boat ramps <laughs> not waiting for the settlement agreement license in the same way you took that initiative that we take some initiative to do some bike paths and some bridges and some lighting for the rest of the community Okay, well, just to, you know, it's funny you mentioned that, because I, when I was there with my family last week, I was, you know, going along, I was taking pictures of this stuff. Why are you taking a picture of this sign? Why are you taking a picture of this, like, you know, this uh, launch, launch right. point? And everything? It was just because it was really good ideas for, you know, because um, it is a, a you know, a first class, a, a, you know, that, that, that green belt there along the river is really neat. Um, so, uh, but just... Just to provide some some perspective here, you know, the Department of Water Resources has a, a recreation plan. It's it's you know, required through our FERC license, right? <laughs> so, it is 
part of our, you know, our FERC recreation boundary. So that, that's really the jurisdiction of the, the FERC license. During the relicensing, we drafted with a lot of community support. I and mean, we had you know, four or five years of you know, meetings and um, studies, studies that were directed by you know, community members that said, okay, I want to have this looked at, I want to have that looked at. And so we you know, did all those studies, took all the results, um, you know, condensed it down, and we had a, you know, a year or two of meetings and negotiations to draft a recreation plan that we have now sitting on the shelf. So that recreation plan was not DWR's recreation plan. It was the stakeholders' recreation plan that we, we you know, came to an agreement on. And so that document is, is sitting on the shelf now. That is our recreation plan. So um, it, 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 it's focused on you know, our FERC project boundary, you know, our, our area. But there was discussion at that time, that, well, your FERC project boundary doesn't <coughs> include the city of Oroville. What about the, you know, the river and trails and you know, things, you know, the river corridor? That was you know, part of the, the, the discussion for the supplemental benefits fund, where um, going beyond the just the um, the FERC project boundary area, the supplemental benefit fund is is a, is a concept where DWR provides funding to the community, to this panel, and then this panel decides about those trails and those bridges and right. the, the but, wave you know, uh, you know the wave pool or you know the, all right. of those things. But That's, so DWR provides the funding, and this committee makes the determinations on on how that funding is spent, not DWR. So you shouldn't sure. be asking me. You should be. Well, discussion that amongst yourselves. I know, and I, and I know that you keep pointing it back to when you guys get the money, you can do that. But I, I'm going to push it back to you and say, you know, one million dollars per year, per year, even to do, you know, these trails is, you know, especially when we have other things, you know, little little things. I mean, I know it gets it gets bled dry, but there's there's the needs that really one million dollars goes. It's especially for you know projects, state projects. It's it's like it's nothing. It's nothing, you know. So again, I'm just saying that you guys took initiative to do boat ramps, and I know from my understanding, you would probably know this better. But the whole reason why all the parties came together was um, genesis by f fishers, right? David it was more of like the boat guys kind of initiated the whole conversation of hey, we we think we should have a voice into this whole process. Is that do you remember right? Kind of. Um. I, w I remember a few things. Um, the fishermen were um, very inf influential mm -hmm. um, because fishing used to be done in the in the river and such. But it it was this committee that made the cho the choices. Um, we went. Remember Dave when we went to the water park, mm -hmm. and we looked at a lot of different things. Some were doable some weren't but um i i <laughs> that's what was done then right. and and he's right about the committee so yeah. was very quickly if i can add um yeah. so i was here in 2003 i went to the FERC licensing meetings most of them gpa meetings ORAC meetings chamber meetings etc um david pittman was a vanguard on a lot of those projects the whitewater issue etc um, there were a lot of stakeholders, but you know those stakeholders almost are all now gone. They've either passed on or they moved out of the area. And what they planned for, those things have changed. The weather patterns have changed. They, everything's changed. Mm -hmm. uh, money does not have the same value anymore, and it's not going to. It's going to get worse. So a million dollars is nothing. And what do you do with a million dollars anymore? Yeah. I'd really like to see a redress of this contract so we get more out of our dam, our water resource. In Downeyville, they're building a 3.7 miles of trail for $100,000. Mm. I don't know why it would be so much more expensive here. I mean, maybe the type of trail you're building. And they're giving away a mountain bike at the end of the season, too, yeah. on what? top of that. On a, on a side note, for us, I know that we're doing a, a stretch of river just underneath Bossburger. I think that grant is $250,000. Yeah, so and it's not even... 216 it's not even what 50 yards right yeah i think it's different different caliber of trail committee member pittman yeah thank you i appreciate the discussion i think uh, um two things one is i think uh eric understands that this committee is looking for trails as the as the future funding source and maybe our um offering of funding might be for those projects that might come out um the other thing that I wanted to mention, and Eric, this may be uh, good for you to do for this committee, is to bring an overview of 
the attachments at the end of the settlement agreement. Uh, example 6.5-1 trailheads, page 634, 6-34. It has a listing of the trails that would be worked on if the agreement was done, starting with uh, Hamilton, Tolan Road, Tresvias, Lakeland Boulevard, Saddle Dam, Bidwell Canyon, Brad Freeman, Chaparral, Dan Beebe, Feather Falls Trail, Lofer Creek, Swimbo Trail, OW, OWA Trails, Potter's Ravine Trail, Roy Rogers Trail, and Wick Island Trail. Those are listed at the end of the settlement agreement as projects to be worked on. That might be a good thing for you to kind of give an overview because each one of those paragraphs identify what work that we're looking for to be done. And it's in the back of it. It might be good to have a, a PowerPoint and the listing because each one of these things has a list of proposals, what, and I'm going to use a word called PM&Es. And Claudia, what's a PM&E? PM &E? Sounds like a flower. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Pre prevention mitigation enhancements. Thank you, David. <laughs> yes. I had to explain that to her the other day. It was pretty funny. That's essentially what's in the settlement agreement. And if you understand what I'm saying, those PM&Es might be good to bring to this committee to review them in a, in a PowerPoint session this, because there's a listing of all these details that I think the folks are talking about here, if you understand what I'm saying. Yes, I do, um, and we can certainly do that. Um, but I should also point out that the, um, the Recreation Management Plan is, you know, it's, it's a package right. of, of, of a variety of different things. It includes a, a lot of things. It has a monitoring plan in there. It has, um, you know, trigger points for when we'll do, you know, additional right. um, um, uh, enhancements, PM&Es. Um, it also contains a, a full description of a recreation advisory committee that will be established, mm -hmm. and you know procedures for the committee. You know who, who will attend the committee, a dispute resolution. I mean, there's a, a lot of things that are part of that package. The recreation management plan is, um, you know, certainly should be done in concert with, with the efforts of this committee, and some of the committee members here, I'm sure, will be on the recreation advisory committee. But um, they are really kind of two different components of the settlement agreement. Right. You know, right. the recreation management plan. Um, Really, um, you know, doesn't trigger until the new license is issued. This committee, you know, of course, you know, didn't uh, wasn't dependent upon the new license. So, um, you know, we we can provide that information as an informational item, but we are not going to be able to go in and start making any changes to the recreation management plan until the new license is issued, and right. it triggers that recreation advisory committee that will get together and actually start talking about that. Right. I anticipate, you know, one of the first things that's going to happen once we get the the committee going is we're going to take a look at this uh, recreation management plan. Um, you know. 2006 versus you know you know nowadays you know pr present day and just you know what what has been constructed what you know what makes sense are the things in there that just don't really seem to make sense anymore I, I think we're going to have that discussion just an assessment of, of where things are right I mean there, gotcha. there are activities that occur now that you know stand up paddle boarding didn't exist back in 2006 right. so uh, just as an example so anyways it, yeah I, I definitely see that as that process so you know we can certainly provide that as an informational item for this committee but it really won't be until the the new license is issued that 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 right. recreation management plan will trigger but i think if this committee saw that and saw the details here the next nofa we put out for funding requests we could pick one of those items pick a trail from our side of the thing for whatever in advanced funding we get, you follow my thinking, because we've done these requests for proposals on a broad basis, uh, as long as it had access to the river, maybe what we're going to do in the meantime, if we don't have this 2100 thing issued, that we, in the next NOFA, we focus on one particular thing, whatever it may be, uh, there's a whole list of trails that could be set or uh, trail improvements. We would have that uh, uh, ability to do that, and maybe that, I think that helps what Shannon's talking about. Uh, so we just need to have that informational presentation and then detail because I have this thing on my topic right here and there's a lot of things that people don't know are in the plan to get done and if we were to provide that to this committee the next amount of money we have for ANOFA we might be able to pick one of those items and actually give direction for that. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. So uh, I can certainly do that. We can we can yeah. uh, give a presentation on the on the um, uh, recreation management plan. One thing I would recommend, though, is for the, the, this committee to review the um, the conceptual plan document. I mean, there there was a, you know, I know this goes back a few years now, but there was a, actually a document prepared by this committee right. that actually looked at potential projects that could be done, and you know, actually has recommendations in there for um, for projects. So. Um, you know, I'd recommend this committee also re review that document because it was prepared, you know, by this committee for, for you know for this committee by you know previous members. The other thing I'd like to ask is, I know there was a plan for having your 
your DWR team for all these enhancements of the settlement. What's the status of that grouping? Do you have people in an office up there ready to work on these projects, or is that holding? What's the status of that? We do. We're, we're very busy with the current license and, you know, of right. course, all these new projects. I mean, this, uh, you know, the last few years, we've actually been implementing several of the, the big projects in Correct. the, the settlement yeah. agreement. So, um, yeah, we've been very busy with that. But, yes, we, we are. Um, As part of that presentation, I might add that having a status of where that's at, what are being worked on so we're aware, sure. um, would be a good thing to do, too. So we don't, you know, focus on a project that you're already working on, that kind of thing. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Thompson. I think Mr. DeLong was in there first. You're good. So the back to the, I'm going to keep kicking this horse here. <laughs> so back to the, uh, the boat ramps, who was there just your department that, um, you know, took that and ran with it as far as getting the boat ramps developed. Yeah. So, you know, we had the, of course, the spillway emergency happened. Right. Um, and closed that, that, you know, the, our, our, our biggest boat right. ramp facility at the, at the, at the project right. there at the spillway. And, um, you know, we lost parking, we lost boat uh, launching and everything. So, um, there was governor's order. Um, yeah. so a variety of things happened that, uh, lined that up. So, uh, streamlined the environmental permitting process. Um, FERC was, uh, very agreeable because we can't do a big project like that without, uh, without FERC approval. So we had, had to make a request to FERC to allow us to amend our current recreation plan to mm -hmm. add these projects. And, uh, they had to approve that before, um, it, it right. happened. So, and, and so we did that. So, um, so your, your, your staff did that. Yes. Yes, they did. So is it, is it feasible then possibly, just hypothetically speaking, that possibly your staff could potentially put together a proposal for FERC to amend the plan and do some trails here along the river nexus? nexus okay, well, here. so that was... It, it just, we had so a, hypothetically, we is had, it possible? We, but, but, you know, I should back up. We had <laughs> our DWR management said to do this, okay? So they, they're the ones that directed us to, to take these actions, spend this money, and, and uh, implement these, uh, these projects early. That was, that was where it starts. So um, we've now completed those projects, and so um, you know, my, it, it, that that would I would require that kind of a directive from my management to um, to implement. Could you ask management? Project. Is it possible to ask management if this is something that they could allow you to pursue? Well, we've talked about this. I mean, we're we're basically we've we've implemented these projects, amended our recreation plan, and now we're going to be um, kind of um, back to. Uh, maintaining these the, our our projects as they are, our facilities as they are, and waiting for the new FERC license issue before we we go into any new um, big I, projects. Um, maybe I'll re reset. It. Could you? May I ask you, Eric, if you could ask whomever is in the you know echelon of DWR, could could you please ask your management or whomever it may be who has the power to ask for, because I'm sure you would like those similar trails or something similar to what you saw in Boise to not have to drive nine hours to get to Boise to enjoy that, <laughs> that, you know, that you could look and say, hey, look, we got something here, you know, in downtown Orville that the whole community and that you could enjoy. Could I can raise that issue with my management, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. I'm going to, I'll follow up to, to okay. see what they may say, but thank you for, for raising that question with your management. Okay. Any other comments? Moving forward to the State Water Contractors Advisor Report. Uh, this is Jonathan Young with the State Water Contractors. No updates or reports on my end. Hello and thank you. Mm -hmm. And with mine, it's um, per usual, it is a written informational update that is um, in your packet. So if you have any questions on that. Uh, none attached. None? Any agenda so items? Ones that were handed out by Mr. Legron would be a correspondent for today. Hearing no agenda items. I had one other item. I'm not sure. This is Eric. Oh. Over here. Yes. Um, just to, to, to back up on, on the, uh, the subject of the contract. So um, are we going to um, reconvene and have a discussion about that? The reason why I say that is because just just so you understand our, our timeline. When I say months, I'm talking about many months. Um, if we are um, actively going, say, in, in August on this, um, it probably, you know, the, the earliest we'd have the contract 
completed would probably be December, which means that you know the advance payment wouldn't occur till January or February. So I just want to give give that idea. So if we waited till October to have that discussion or make a final decision on it, you know, we're talking about that much that much longer before we'd be able to get the uh, get an actual check cut to um, the, the SBF. So just just wanted to point that out. So you know, time is really of the essence. If you know you, you, right. you are interested in, in getting a, an advance payment in um, you know the first part of next year. So if we took action in two weeks, it'd be that'd be, that'd be fine. Yeah. Okay. I would really, uh, from the perspective of the city, we prefer to take our time and see what our options are. I mean, we're not going to be uh, bum rushed into a contract that may not be in our best interest. I and, understand and that. Regardless of the dollars that are there, um, you know, don't glue down a quarter and try to trick me into it's a hundred dollar bill. Um, so, so we'll you know, we need we weeks. need to see what our options are. Okay. I mean, because. Okay. okay, if there's nothing else. Do we want to set, since we all are in the same room, do we want to set a date for that two-week meeting since um, sure. instead of sending multiple emails and everyone deciding when they're available? Isn't that one of those voting things or like what ones what we did before? It was like a couple options. Yeah, we could do, it's called a doodle or survey monkey or something. I, Would you prefer that if I sent out a couple dates? Well, throw out, what date do you have? I just... So I can look at my right calendar now. right now. So the 11th. So what do we have? Well, just the chambers. Sure. So we have a prior meeting at 3 o'clock on that day, but if we could do an earlier one, normally our meetings are at 2, but if we could do a 1 or a noon, um, we could be out of here before the 3 o'clock. On the 11th? I am, yes. I'll be out of town from the 11th to the 14th. Um, Tuesday the tenth. Oh, I have. Oh, it's a part. That works for me. We have a four o'clock meeting that day, but if we did, like I said earlier in the day, two o'clock work. Two o'clock on the tenth sounds good to me. You check. Reynolds. Yes. Fine. Shannon's. Okay. The tenth. Two o'clock on the tenth. Two o'clock. Here. Yes. Yes. Okay, if there's nothing else, we'll adjourn at 316. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.